Hello, everyone. We're, Hi. we're live at Epic Headquarters. I'm Stacy. I'm Joe. <laughs> Steve. Hi. Jim Brown. We're being very informal today. It was Jim. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I broke the <laughs> broke the format. Uh. There. You did. Uh, so first of all, we would like to thank everyone for all their entries in the PolyCount Challenge. We had yeah. some really amazing entries. Uh, be sure to go over to polycount.com and check the thread. Cam should be posting it in the stream. Um, and we'll be picking winners soon, a couple, few weeks. Yep. And uh, so today we're going to be giving a project update. And we're, where we are right now, we're going to talk a little bit about CTF. We're going to talk a little bit about the translocator, and we're also going to talk about CTF scoring. Yeah. Yep. So do you want to jump into CTF? Sure. Okay. Um, so, so we've been working on CTF. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't been in the forums, if you have been, you know we've been working on CTF. Quite controversial in some areas. But we're making some, I think, really good changes. Uh, I think that our, our big idea behind this is to try and take CTF and make it more sports-like and less game-like, and that's why we've introduced half-times, we've introduced sudden death. Uh, all the changes that we've made are basically in that direction in, yeah. in order to try and make it more friendly to a viewing audience yeah. uh, when so we So why half-time? Yeah. I would say less game-like, right? That's not really... Yeah. More, 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 yeah. Less, yeah. less arena shooter-like. Yeah. Well, but I wouldn't even say that, right? I mean, I don't think that that's anti-arena shooter. It's just more, more focused on being fun for an audience to watch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, was, that was one of the main goals we banted about, is like if we want to go down the, the eSport route, not, not hardcore, super, super straight competitive, but the game needs to be as fun to look at and to watch as it does to, to play. To play it. Yeah. So th these, there's a few changes we've made to try and kind of start that process and see how it, see how it plays out. So. And it's going to be a pretty long run. I mean, there's a lot of things that we want to try. And... Um, Halftime and overtime and the new uh, sudden death are the very, very beginning of it. We, we really want to do some things presentation-wise that I think are going to be really kind of unique that nobody's seen before and that are really missing in the eSports arena right now in terms of uh, just giving the spectator a chance to, to gain more information without having that frantic pace that you always see in eSports. <laughs> So why don't we, we got some people up and playing it, so why don't we jump on, okay, let's um, jump on. and show so, so can you explain halftime a little and, bit? And keep in mind, none of that new stuff is necessarily in yet. We just got the <laughs> prototype of okay. halftime. And we started Stacy looking at a flat wall. Awesome. <laughs> That's always good. We're making good progress. <laughs> so we're here back on our everybody's favorite map face. Um, I, I think we, we've gone back pretty much to the UT99 dimensions for the map itself, right, Jim? Yeah, I made some slight adjustments just to uh, to open up the bases a little more and um, reduce some camping up top, things like that. Stuff we had just gotten from our play test. Um, but yeah, I started with the UT99 oh, core <laughs> um, and then just converted that over to the current game scale. So it should it should feel almost exactly like the original. Except for the fact that then we went and did the UT3 translocator, essentially. So we'll get to that in a little while. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, we've been having a lot of fun playing it internally. And I know a couple people outside the company who've set it up from like the Beyond Unreal guys and the community have been playing it. And I think so far we haven't gotten any negative feedback on the idea of, of halftime or any of these new systems that we're looking to put in. Now, the bigger stuff hasn't come online yet. And I think that's uh, that's going to be fun when it does. But I, I, I'm overall, I'm pretty happy with where we're at. Ooh, nice save there, Stacey. <laughs> yeah, I like the idea of halftime. Joe and I had kind of bantied back and forth. Um, I almost want to take it a, a step further and, and go more like a traditional sports game so that when somebody scores, um, there's a moment where everybody gets to see it and teams get reset. Um, that definitely messes with the notion of... You know, you cap the flag and grab it right away and all that, you know, the kind of teamwork and coordination that goes on there. Um, but I think that the overall readability of the game, whether it's just a halftime or whether it's every score, uh, of being able to have a moment to get your breath, to do an instant replay, to be able to look at some information, to give casters a bit of time to talk, um, uh, and it, it kind of makes the game easier to follow it from yeah. a spectator perspective. But, well. but th I mean, there's more than one way to do that, right? I mean, yeah. Absolutely. So obviously, we could. I mean, you can go anywhere from the traditional. There's there's no pause or no change reset between captures to just there's a a pause between captures that gives a chance for 
you know, the audience to take in what happened, do some kind of replays and some recap, but then continue gameplay from where it was, or you can do a full reset. Full reset I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I guess I'm more in the camp of, of the pause idea because I think that that can be useful without really radically changing gameplay. I think. Yeah. But I think we made a, a yeah. great first step by introducing yeah. the halftime stuff. Yeah. Right. Joe, you should probably explain what it is. We keep mentioning halftime. <laughs> well, basically what we've done is we've split the game into two halves. So when you set up your time limit, we split it and you have a, a period where you play and then halftime hits and basically the map resets. So all the power-ups reset, all the players reset. So it's more like a traditional soccer or football game where you know, you're know you playing and you have that goal and you have that... Uh, sense of time crunch where, oh my god, we've got to finish, I've got the cap, and I've got to get in because we're about to be reset. Oh, I didn't make it. And that's yeah. a really great, fun dynamic to yeah. add to the game. And it's, it's also really good for um, asymmetrical maps because now we can, I don't think we're doing it yet, but we can switch sides at halftime. So mm -hmm. if there's ever any map imbalance, whether it's accident, intentional, or just perceived, <laughs> when, the, when the teams swap, they, they should be back on, on even ground for the second half. And they're also, uh, some of my favorite maps of all times are like Command or November, yeah. where they were really imbalanced. And part of the fun was trying to figure out how to attack, uh, like in Command, right? Trying to figure out how to get up there in a safe way without getting killed. That's what I like, and by having halftime and switching sides, so to speak, you're going to be able to have that. Yeah. And I think it that's going to be a lot of fun. It gives you the, the chance to pull in, you know, the the offensive team can play just as well as the defensive team yeah. um, in an asymmetrical map, so I think, it's, I think it's really cool. And it also means you have to have both skill sets, right? You can't have a team that's really, really good on defense, you know, dominating on their map pick. Yep. We're both watching. We're all yeah. watching Stacey. It's hard not to watch it. It's, <laughs> it's very hard to play with his mouse. But back to the idea of, you know, more presentation when you actually have these really good events like scoring a flag. I, I'm sort of with Steve in that, and that I'm not sure that we want to remove the momentum switch that you can currently get in the game. Yeah. You know, so... But I, I'm all for trying it, and that's, I, I'll warn everybody now, that's going to be one of the next steps is we're going to have, every time you score a cap, we're going to have a pause where the game sets and everything resets. I have one health. Because we need to try it. I, I think that it's a valid idea to give it a shot and see how it affects gameplay across the board. And we're going to really rely on the community also to come back with feedback on that one um, yeah, to see I, if I it works, if it doesn't. Th there's no doubt that no. it's going to interrupt the game flow, but if yeah. it interrupts it in a way that's beneficial to the overall game, I think it'll be worth it. Whether right. it does or not remains to be seen. Yeah. But I mean, now's, now's a great time to try those sort of things, yeah. right? We're, we're not really hurting anybody by trying it for a little while. And if it sticks, great. If it doesn't stick, well, then we move on and try something else in there. Regardless, I think we're going to want some sort of pause when you get up into that. Um, just for esports and for presentation purposes, I think it'll... It'll give that moment of pause and that moment of breath. So the this, the game is no longer <laughs> ends at any certain cap point, right? It, it's that's based, true. There, it's time there, based now, yeah. There's an old school flag, so you can play it just like the original CTF. But the idea is there isn't a score limit. The object is to play through the set time limit of the match, and the winner is the winner. And we're adding a. Uh, uh, both an overtime and a sudden death overtime period where overtime plays just like normal and then sudden death, um, it, uh, every, it, it's sort of like last, last man standing, standing where your health is constantly draining until you kill somebody and killing somebody refreshes your health. So it's going to be an interesting thing to try out. I mean, I'm not sure it's going to work, but it's a good first step at trying to figure out a good sudden death type system. Yeah, uh, and yeah, we, uh, sudden death is one thing. I actually think that having the... Uh, all time limit base is also a good thing from a, from a uh, team ranking um, yeah. point of view because it gives a more consistent way. Like beating somebody 3-0 in, in five minutes versus 20 minutes is a big difference. Yes. And this will give a more consistent framework to judge comparative scores. And yeah, I mean, that, I think that'll help with, uh, I mean, that's another thing we want to do a better to improve is, is how we rank individual players and teams, mm -hmm. uh, both for, uh, Putting people together of similar ranks for you know ladders and tournaments yeah. and matchmaking and stuff like that. So, and we're making um, well, we're really working on trying to come up with a better scoring system for, at the very least, CTF. Um, that that gives you a number and a metric that says this is how well oh, no. I played the game this time I played it. Yeah. And where we're going to use that number, we don't know yet. But I think it's really important 
not so much for the uh, really advanced user, but for that beginner to mid-range user to give them a really good sense of how they accomplished yeah, on the map. The, I, I think that's going to be really The player's important. individual score doesn't affect the outcome of the game as much as, you know, you s that's still determined by a number of caps, but it, it gives you a sense of the things that you accomplished on your individual team or, you know, in the match as a whole. So we can start doing MVP type stuff. We can start giving yeah. rewards for, you know, headshots, special moves, or, you know, accomplishments. And we've done this in the past, right? I mean, we, we always give you scores for assists sure. and caps, but we never really spent enough time really refining it and yeah. balancing it so that it was a truly always a truly representative indicator of how well people did. I mean, there were certainly easy ways to game it mm -hmm. if you're just trying to maximize your individual score. So, And I think part of that is the fact that, so. you know, we always had 10 or 15 people typically <laughs> testing the game, whereas now, hopefully, especially once the test is out, we'll have yeah. a lot more people looking to game yeah. it, and we yeah. can adjust it and tweak it as it goes along. And we've started a thread in the forum, so please stop by the thread and get your say in let us know what you think about what are good scoring events in ctf how should we track it you know is, is it a is it the right idea to balance you know offense versus defense and try and make it balance should we balance no. how, how how we should work with that yeah one of the things i'd love to get feedback on as well is is ways that we can use that scoring system um we've mentioned just briefly how it could impact your matchmaking. Like, you could lose the match but still go up in ranks conceivably if, yeah. if we do the score right. Yeah. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of systems there. Um, we could convert it to XP and use some sort of leveling system. We can do all of, you know, any number of things. Um, I'm not sure how far we want to go with it and how crazy we want to go, but there, there's any number of things that we could do with that. So I'd love to get input from people and see what they want because, um, you know, we can create systems like that all day long, but I'd love to hear what people are actually interested in. So should we talk about the translation? Sure. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you guys are going to go Putting down, on my huh? flak vest. <laughs> oh, I didn't know the fly was back. Well, the translocator is such a, such a tricky uh, subject, right? Because it's a really hard thing to really balance correctly. Stacy apparently hates hers and doesn't use it. I, I don't think we've okay. gotten it right yet. I'm I'm very firmly in the camp of unlimited translocator is very bad, but at the same time, I don't think you should ever notice that you have a charge on your translocator or a respawn time. I, I think the first thing we should really <laughs> clarify is what we feel a translocator should be used okay. for. And to me, I think the two most important things for a translocator are for quickly balance. being able to uh, bypass a short amount of field space. And then the second thing is being able to reach areas and attack from angles that people wouldn't normally expect you to attack from. Uh, so that's, to me, where the translocator has to lie. And then on the defensive side, of course, it's all about chasing down the flag carrier. I mean, UT has that wonderful uh, reverse of the typical CTF uh, motif where you know you're it's not about defense as much as it's about trying to take the flag carrier who's running with your flag and it, where i think we've gone wrong in the past on the translocator is too many times on a map like face you can get across it without a problem but once you introduce any type of corners or small tight spaces you quickly run out of translocator charges yeah. so that's what i think we need to find a way to avoid there are some you know, emergent gameplay that has come out on the translocator, like tele, tele juking. I think that's a really cool aspect, but I don't think it needs to be unlimited. And, and those are the things I think we need to try and solve. Punting with the impact hammer. Well, the problem with pumping <laughs> with the impact hammer, right? And I mean, th this speaks to you in a lot of ways. It breaks maps, oh, yeah, without totally. a doubt. I mean, face is horribly broken by being able to telepunt. Yeah, yeah. I think we took that out in UT3, didn't we, Steve? Uh, I think it was out in 2K3 yeah. and 2K4 as well. Yeah. Because it was really imbalanced. I mean, you could go up to the top, punt all the way across, get the flag. <laughs> no one is going to see you. You're avoiding the entire sniper range. It's the same problem with, you know, the old Redeemer team boosting to get the flag back. Yeah, it's a really kind of neat mechanic, and you can really argue that that's a really good gameplay mechanic, but it, to the average it player, the it yeah. just breaks the heck out of the well, map. It's not even just to the average player, right? It, it breaks the game. It, it forces a certain style of of gameplay that isn't, I mean, it, it's, it's one of the things that's fun in, in isolation is something you do once, but if, if that was all the game, if that's what the game becomes about, then it's, 
it's less rich and less diverse than it could be. Yeah. So what are the different ways that... I haven't gone through all the forum threads yet, so I know that there's a lot of people <laughs> talking about the translocator. And what's the main complaint? Is the number well, of charges, or is it the ref refresh time, or both, or well, what is... It's hard to say. I, I think that there are a lot of people out there who are just set that we've tried it a couple times to try and fix this problem, and uh, honestly, I don't think we've fixed it. Yeah. Right. I think in each iteration of UT, there have been problems with the translocator, and they're very much of the dug-in mindset of, no, we just, just put it back. Just make it the way it was. And I, I'm not necessarily in that camp. I think that we need to continue trying to fix it, especially now that we're going to have a much larger test space during the initial phases of the game. Now is the time to try and figure out okay, here's what we want it to be able to do. How do we make it feel smooth and useful to everybody, not just a very specific small group of people? And how do we do it in a way that it's not going to be overpowered or completely imbalanced or, you know, look like a bug, which yeah. frankly is, I mean, if you go all the way back to UT99, there were people who would spam the translocator out so fast that it really looked like a bug in the game. It was leaving effects everywhere. It made it unplayable. We can't end up there again. So I, I want to see us find a better route. So that's one camp that the really dug in. And then I think we have another much larger camp that really is open for trying things, but they want to make sure that we get it fixed. And I'm totally with those guys. I'm open for trying anything. Uh, we can make any suggestion that doesn't seem completely unrealistic. And let's try it and see what we can what we can solve with it. But we, we can't have an unlimited translocator. And I'm sure I just made a number of enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you already had plenty of enemies. I know. I think we could, but then you have to reduce the reset time, and that's bad in different ways. Well, there, there's been a lot of arguments. Should we get rid of charges and just change the firing sequence, right? But really, all that's doing is giving you a charge of one. Yeah. Right? It, we, we talked about that back in UT3, about going with just sort of a, a timed release and everything. And the problem is that completely removes the idea of telejuking mm -hmm. or using the translocator to you know, come up with really neat attack angles. And I don't really want to lose that. I, I do think that those are important okay, aspects of the game. Nice. What I don't want, I, I want it to be a choice, right? If you're going to do that, that's great. You should have as many throws as you need to be able to pull off that fake move. But you should be deciding that I can pull off that fake move. What I don't want is I'm going to tell, use the Teledisc to get all the way across face, and then as soon as I reach combat, be able to do that. Yeah. Choose one or the other, and that's where I want the choice to come in. I should always throw it up into the fire in my base so that I could yeah. zap back. And then the other thought is, you know, how do we solve, or do we even need to solve, um, telefragging with it? And that one, I'm a lot more on the fence. I mean, I like telefragging. It's not really camping. In each game, we've made it harder and harder to do. <laughs> He's playing defense, Stacy. <laughs> no, I've never seen him camp the flag before. <laughs> Who was camping, Matt? Matt. Uh, you know Matt doesn't camp. He never There's camps. no camping in CTF. <laughs> That's right. There's only defense. This is Matt we're talking about. Yeah. Well, he's probably camping with a shock rifle. He is. Oh, okay. There he is. <laughs> he so moved. much for your theory, Stace. He moved. He probably heard me. He'd probably go, crap. So uh, what else we want to cover today? Any we have uh, questions? Cameron, anything? Know, what else were we going to talk about? Did we talk about? Oh, we were going to talk about the one-button dodge, too. Oh, yeah. That oh, yeah. Here, Steve. So, yeah, I mean, I think we'll, we'll probably, it's, it looks like looking at what the uh, forum response has been that people are interested in uh, both alternatives. So uh, we'll, we'll probably make that a, a, something that uh, is completely configurable by the user when you start. Um, well, I'm you know, likely still have double tap as a default, but make it easy for uh, people to, to choose how they want to how they want to play. Uh, make it obviously configurable which buttons things are bound to. Um, but uh, I think. I mean, I'm mostly going to still use double tap, so I'm not the perfect. Uh, yeah, I'm not to... either. <laughs> I'm all um, about double tapping. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we talked about when we were th thinking of this was a the accessibility of, of being able to discover the dodge because very few people do, and we can do training maps and whatever. But um, we actually uh, Sydney actually created some race maps for us, so yeah. you can go. 
Um, and, and they're a lot of fun. We're having a good time. And with them. see how fast yeah. you can get to the other side by dodging, by sprinting, by or by using the double tap versus the single tap. Um, and it's actually pretty surprising. You can do, I think, a little bit faster if you do the single tap dodge right now. Yeah. So I, yeah, you can. Really? I, single tap has. It a, doesn't flow as well, I don't yeah. think. But once you get the the rhythm of it down, it's pretty. And, Responsive. The the amount of difference is very slight. Yeah, I mean, I, I found it, single tap to be a little bit difference. <laughs> better for it's it's very slight, but it's I mean it's more because you're also having to take your 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 changing configuration, but like because this is purely movement and not firing mm -hmm. and yeah. so forth. But I found it a little bit better for wall dodging because I found I was able if you're really trying to sprint, I found I was able to time exactly when I was close enough to the wall to dodge along it better with a single tap because with a double tap it's on the second tap that you have to be at the right, right. spot and so it's harder to have that second tap happen exactly when you've just barely nailed it or right there. I mean, you want to be, you know, you can dodge once you're 50 units away from the wall in the direction you're facing. It's also, so it's also non-directional, right? Like, mm -hmm. so you don't have to think about which direction to dodge. You can just hit jump, dodge, jump, dodge, and it'll go automatically. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I would love for people to go through to there and, and, and report it's back hard, their times or see what they that. did. Yeah. To you know, since we different. put in the race map, I'm really surprised we haven't seen, you know, more race videos and threads in the forum talking about yeah. race times. I wish we would. I, people who are out there playing it, please play the race map and post your time. See if you yeah. can beat ours. Um, I think you have the record right now, I Stace. Have, yeah, for the, the, well, for the one that has no walls. Though I, I will say, weren't you cheating by using the impact hammer? <laughs> <laughs> but again, I would love, Maybe. that's what we want, right? Yeah. We, want, we want people to figure that stuff out so yeah. that it, yeah. it doesn't break the game later. Yeah, I'm especially curious with uh, like some of the tight maps with uh, wall dodging and slope dodging if there's, if there's ways to go even faster. Like, I'd be curious for that. Like, uh, that's the kind of thing that I think... Uh, the community can be very innovative yeah. and creative. Well, about it, it also is good impact hammer trying out. <laughs> sure. No, I, I have to say when I realized that that's how you beat my time, I was like, oh, <laughs> why didn't I think of that? <laughs> so it was totally not your fault. And, <laughs> but we should, we yeah. should do a second one that enables the translocator, and then we can test that as well. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, well, you know, I actually asked for Sydney for a version that had a longer run so we could look at, you know, telespamming versus yeah. long, you know, even throws that are set for the timing response. Yeah, so, high ceiling versus low ceiling. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. we can get a good feel of, you know, traversal and how fast you can move with the translocator using the different I've mold. been practicing too, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I you're haven't. on with no, with, with no impact hammer. Oh, I see how it's going to go. We're going to have to have multiplayer this <laughs> so we can run in-game, you know, and, and put that on the next Twitch stream. So, Ken, we got any questions? Uh, I didn't get it, so why don't you just ask it okay. and I'll repeat it. You say you are talking a bit about spawn kills earlier. Is there any plan spawn protection or spawn play that's inherent part of UT? There is spawn protection. There's been spawn protection in every UT except for the original. Um, I mean, the goal right now we need to do some work on improving our uh, respawning, especially in deathmatch, because I mean, ideally, you know, spawn protection. To, is something you rarely see because people shouldn't be spawning right next to where there's an enemy. So, and I, I mean, think people don't don't necessarily also also don't necessarily realize. Wow, there was too many words in that sentence. People don't realize that if you fire your gun, you re you negate your spawn protection. It which, goes away. Yeah. Which is okay for me because Joe and I are both on that. You don't need spawn protection if you just dodge. You know, Ooh, old but school. We, but we but remember spawn protection only get for for. A couple seconds. So it really is just to give you a chance to to, 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 move, to orient to and dodge way. and move and start yeah. moving before you get shot. The, the, the problem is that a new player, yeah. their first reaction is to, oh, I'm being shot at. I'm going yes. to fire yeah. shoot, shoot. shoot. and then they. But yeah, I mean, ideally, spawn protection is something that you. I mean, ideally, the only person who would ever notice that there's spawn protection is somebody who's trying to spawn kill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's fun. And so, and we should make it hard enough for that to happen yeah. that in normal play, it's just not something that comes up. Exactly. However, I, mean, I love the way it is on this game. Spawn. Can, you know, attacking spawn bases in, in CTF, especially face, is sort of a time on <laughs> I mean, I can't tell you how many, how many times. Yeah, it is absolutely <laughs> fun. So I, I agree with Stacy. I, I actually don't like spawn protection on upper level servers, but it is something you have to have yep, for agree. the beginner player because what you don't want them is getting on a server with a bunch of really good snipers on, say, face or one of these open long maps where they're just going to get eaten alive by somebody as soon as they pop in, and that's no fun. Yeah. Now they just get eaten like two seconds. Fun, that's right. You know, they get shot. They try and fire back. I shoot them again. Yeah. But well, it's yes. also, I mean, it's it's like you said, it's a big part of 
TDM too. It was like yeah. once you have control of the battlefield, you know they're down one. I mean, even that guy respawns back in. He doesn't have an arsenal of weapons, and so a lot of good teams will actually target that player because he becomes you know, yeah. an easy kill until the team can reorganize. So, yeah. One thing that we definitely have to get better are both the third person and the first person effects to know that you're hitting somebody with spawn protection yeah. and that you generally have spawn protection on right now. Yeah. We have to, f th that will come. I mean, we're just in temp content right now for those sort of things. Yeah. And when we do, you'll, you'll really have a better feel for it. Yeah. That's why the person who posted the question probably didn't even know he had spawn protection, right? Because there's, there's nothing in yeah. third person, and I don't think we've ever had anything in first. Actually, no, didn't we have the the particle effect in one of the games? It, we, we've had something in, in third person before where when you, got, when you were shot we'll while you were spawn protected, the shield built effect up. But um, I'm not sure. And the problem is with putting something in first person is that, you know, telling somebody they have the flag, I mean, you have to have giant flashing... <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, we did. I think in UT3, like it used to say you have spawn, or spawn protection it? ends in, and it would do, do a countdown, and yeah. people never We could that. certainly yeah. do something along those it's lines just, again. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of those HUD messages get totally lost. Yeah. Anything that has going. to go in text is sad. Yeah. yeah. Not going to work. Can you try to send him another question and see if maybe his window is just not? Yeah. Uh, there's another one. What do you guys think of the overall speed of the game so far? What do we think of the overall speed of the game so far? Hey, Steve. So, I, I mean, it's something we're still tweaking. I mean, you'll, if you guys follow our change list, we're still changing daily. I think um, one thing is it's certainly, I think it's hard for people who are just Flashing. running around empty maps to judge um, how fast the game feels versus playing um, actual matches. Um, and I'm not sure, we're looking right now, I think Got there might count. be some problems with the, I mean, we haven't really tested package builds, so I'm not sure if there's issues with the package builds that some people are using. Um, but anyway, that's something that we're still looking at, and we're trying to you know, you know, balance making sure that the game is, feels good to play and is fun to play uh, for all UT players and is approachable for, for new players as well. I, I think the general consensus in the forums has been the, like, the old UT99 players feel like we're too slow. Um, and so we recently sped it up just a little bit to, to kind of yeah. go with them, but we don't want to get to the point where it becomes so frantic that um, the average player kind of gets lost in the shuffle um, or can't keep up or, you know. Yeah. And we're still things. tweaking too, right? Yep. Still playing. But I like the speed. I mean, I, I think it feels pretty good. UT99, when we go back and do those play tests, wow, it's just really fast. And maybe it's the fact that I'm getting older, but... You know, it, I I prefer where we are right now. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like where we are right now, just a little bit slower. Um, but I do think that's one of those things that really kind of sets UT apart from yeah. all yeah. the other shooters out there. Is that it's it's, yeah. it's it's crazy, it's frantic, it's fast, um, and you got to really think on your feet and be able to do those split second decisions. Um. Back to spawn protection, have you considered a casual slash competitive mode where you can turn on spawn protection on and off? Um, well, I mean, that's certainly, well, so it's certainly likely that we'll provide some kind of support. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm sure some people remember that we have mutators and stuff in UT, so that will provide some kind of support for um, optional uh, gameplay um, tweaks like that. Um, you know, certainly it's possible that there will be um, a standard set of competitive settings. You know, we've even talked about having some difference, the possibility of having uh, new player servers that have some different settings than, than uh, more advanced players, both for um, making it, uh, providing a, a more uh, easier to get into introduction to the game for, for new players, and also to really discourage people who are already experienced UT players from really wanting to go in and beat on, uh, on, the, on the new players and give them a chance to, to explore the game without having... Uh, having the more experienced players uh, jump in and, and destroy them. Uh, so there's something, I mean, we're, it's still early. I mean, it's still just stuff we're, we're kind of chatting about and we're, we'll figure out. The next question that just came up was, uh, will there be a possibility of rocket jumping with any weapon? And if yes, which weapons will it be? Um, so we've already made rocket jumping much more useful um, and specifically tested with the rocket launcher. Um, although it does cause a pretty significant amount of damage, you can get quite high. Um, We'd ha we're not making that a, a weapon-specific thing, so a weapon that uh, imparts a lot of momentum is going to be more useful for, for a rocket jumping kind of thing. Um, kind of our thinking right now, and this is still, hasn't, we haven't actually 
tested this or implemented it, so it's, this is still conjecture. Um, our thinking is that uh, we want to support rocket jumping with other weapons more than we have in the past and have that be the more advanced move where there's more of a risk reward where, you know, like jumping with a rocket takes a lot of health, but you can get quite high with it and then um, make the impact hammer uh, sort of more the... Um, Easy. The easier mode, where, yeah. where it's, still, it's you know, still, still the same kind of thing that you have to jump and, and, and shoot, but you're the, it has a more consistent um, reward and, you know, in terms of how high you get and cost in terms of the health. It's a relatively less uh, amount of damage than, than other types of jumps, but you won't get as high, the, as high potentially, plus you have to switch to the impact hammer. So we think that's a way to, in, to provide a balance where um, there's always an advantage to being expert enough to really being able to use the best uh, weapon for that situation and for the jump you want to make, but making it more approachable for, for less skilled players. And we also we, we want to put more of a focus on making that act an actual part of the game, not like a fringe yeah. move. So that yeah. it becomes more common. You see it more frequently. There's areas and maps that you just can't get to yeah. without some sort of boosted assisted jump. And you, you'll see that even in FO8, the, in the first yeah. test map that we have out there. Um, uh, all of the power-ups originally were up in high locations that you needed yeah. boots to get to or rocket jump. Yeah. Yeah. We moved the belt yeah. down recently um, for various reasons, but all the other power-ups are still up in high locations yeah. for that very reason. And I think, uh, I mean, I think that also kind of um, is points out one of the other things that we're thinking about. As we're like trying, you know, we're spending a lot more time really consciously exploring some of what were more the, the more expert moves that we never really thought about, like slope dodging, that we never really yeah. explicitly designed around before. But at the same time, we, I mean, part of what we're doing is we want to get those right and we want to make those work well um, for, for higher level play. But we also want to make them more standard parts of the game. And so, you know, with things like slope dodging, I mean, it's one of the things that we will explicitly have levels designed around it, have um, try to train players to use it have um, specific animations that go with slope dodging so it doesn't just look like some weird, you know, sliding guys up sliding hill. up a wall all crouched up. <clears throat> and so, um, so we're making those more first-class citizens of the game. And so that's, uh, that's one of the things as we're exploring all these mechanics is we want to incorporate, you know, a lot of these mechanics that have made UT what it is but make sure that they yeah. really are all accessible and usable by the whole population of players. Yeah. Um. Are you 100% on the base game right now, or are you also dedicating time to bringing up innovative features like the CTF halftime? Uh, examples include curve shots, selfies, gravity actors. Um, we're Everything's on open, features that are yeah. part of the base game, like yeah. uh, halftime. Yeah. But we're not looking at other really fringe features yet other than movement. Yeah. We do um, like the idea of selfies. Yeah, but I, I don't know <laughs> about um, <laughs> but we don't know shots Definitely. or gravity actors yeah. or anything like that. We haven't even really discussed those. Um, we'll have, I mean, well, I am going to put in, because um, one of uh, Dave Ewing was asking for um, uh, custom gravity support. And so I'm going I'm to add a, I'm gonna add a custom. Tell why he wants it. He said he needs it for his map. I said, yeah. why? And he well, said, the slow volume was surprise. so much fun. So. Yeah. I mean, we had a lot of fun in, more so in Onslaught with the slow volumes, though. Those yeah. were always really fun. But um, so we so so we will definitely um, start adding some of that stuff. But right now we're really focusing on just getting the very base game yeah. working. And I mean, there's still a lot of work to do with getting the network code working right and the input code working right and get that stuff optimized and really feeling right. Um, you know, but we're still a long ways from being done exploring all the new kinds of of weapon features. Even with movement, even if you know, as we settle down on our core movement mechanics, we'll still be exploring new ideas as we go along, you know, that, that on, in terms of things that can build upon those core mechanics and fit it, you know, but th what we kind of, what we needed to do and why it was such a priority to, to uh, initially right now be focused on movement mechanics is to have something that we can feel confident that we can build levels around. Yeah. So the only thing that that means is that once we've, de once we've defined what those core mechanics are, we won't want to make changes to the mechanics that break how all the levels we've built yeah. Are, but we'll still be open to unless they are so incredibly up. awesome that we build all yes. the new maps yeah. around. <laughs> those absolutely, as well. yeah. and, and 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 frankly, that's that's it's something that uh, if we that the community can do like as well. That, yeah. We'll yeah. absolutely take that idea and run with it. But somebody yeah. has to show us yeah. that it's absolutely awesome. Before. And and slope dodges are a great example of that. I mean, that was nothing. That was not anything we ever actually intended. It just kind of happened. It was a bug that that <laughs> yeah. happened that got exploited that we embraced, and then now we're looking at it as an actual movement feature. 
That was one of the first things I said. We put a lot of thought and a lot of time into it. How come we can't slope dodge? Yeah, so um, stuff like that that we hope once we get the core system in place, maybe there'll be some new moves that come up that we hadn't even thought of yet, and I'd, I'd love to see what people do with them. Yeah, I think the only reason why I'm branching out on CTF is because we really want to uh, explore that esports aspect and see if yeah. it's really viable with the the pausing of the game and creating these sort of more. And, I mean, there's no points. reason we couldn't do that same thing in TDM uh, or even deathmatch. I mean, yeah. you can come up with really neat ideas, but we need a test bed to try it out on so that we can start pushing forward. But we're still pretty much on the basic game. But speaking of netcode, somebody asked. Um, What's the current state of the net code? What will it be? I think what they're trying to get at is that we're going to, are we going to have client side uh, hit detection, which? Um, so that's still something that we're thinking about how, what we want to yeah. do. I mean, so we recognize the need for, um, for letting players play well with higher likes. Which is, we've got some, and frankly, off the top of my head, I don't remember our conversations, but I've been having some conversations with Matt about some ways to, to address those kinds yeah. of issues. And we think we've got some ideas that can work well in terms of being balanced for giving a, you know, making it more playable for, for high ping players, but at the same time not giving, I mean, frankly, uh, zero ping can actually give an advantage to high, high ping, ping players, players relatively. So, um, Well, it's um, a trade off of yeah. problems, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. going to client side hit right? detection just introduces a different set of problems. Yeah. So, so, so we've got some thoughts about how to address that. I, I mean, I guess all I'll say now is we haven't really come to any decisions or, or, or started really experimenting with it yet, so I don't know where we'll end up, but it's something that we uh, recognize as an important area for us to um, explore. Yeah, I mean, we haven't even started network profiling yet to see, yeah. to make sure that we're not doing anything crazy. I don't think we are, yeah. but we haven't checked to see if we're doing anything crazy yeah. yet, so. Yeah, fundamentally, architecturally, UE4 should allow us to have more efficient um, networking, both from a from bandwidth point of view and also from a server performance point of view than we've had in the past. Uh, but realistically, since we haven't looked at yeah. profiling and really thought about it, I'm sure that right now we're, we're significantly worse than, than we've been in the past. But we should be able to get to an endpoint that's better than where we've been. And so yeah. that's one of the things that we'll be looking at in the next couple of months. And um, that's going to be one of the benefits to having the test version of the game come out is that we'll have a much larger sample pool to look at. We'll really see what happens in the real world in terms of bandwidth yeah. use and CPU use. And that's yeah, going to be great. I think that's going to be one of our first really big tests will be. Yeah. You know, what happens when you throw a million people at the game? What happens when you throw <laughs> yeah. more than 10? Well, yeah, what happens if you've got four 32-player servers running on a VM yeah. somewhere? Yeah. Those, those are going to be really good things to test out that we would never have been able to test without having the community-based um, project. Uh, is there going to be a single-player component? No, not by default. I mean, we're going to have multiplayer in the test eventually, someday, maybe. Yeah. But I mean, I certainly think... Uh, there's a lot of different ideas for single player or for other kind of meta games to wrap the game around. I mean, our feeling is we don't want to do anything, you know, and, or that would um, that changes the the core, you know, in a match gameplay. Right. But if people want to to experiment with and implement um, these meta wrappers like a single player um, tournament or whatever, I think that would be. I, I think that's an awesome area for the community to explore. Um, and maybe someday that's something we'll get to, but we're a long ways away from even. Yeah, we've we, we've had very basic discussions on getting bot support online at yeah. some point in the mid yeah. to distant future. Yeah, that's but I mean that's not even I mean yeah. that's not really single player. I guess right, I'm but I mean you need camping. that before yeah, you, need that. you can get anything. Yeah. So until you see us making check-ins that have bot support, there's yeah. not going to be any type of single player yeah. thought. Um, what are your plans for spectator mode UTV? Or direct streaming, where plans are. We're get this every week. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have. Oh, I mean, so it's our a, plans a for spectrum right? motors. That, yeah, that's something we're going to start working on implementing. I mean, part of it is what are your plans for for implementing those features as well? UTV is not something that Epic has ever done. Yeah. And there's people in the community that know more about uh, the features those they want the and the implementation they want for that. Um, we would love to work with uh, you guys to get those things in, but. Uh, um, that's not just a question to ask Epic. I mean, that's a question for, yeah, I, for I, you I've, guys. I have, I have, I've addressed many threads about this in the forum, and I keep telling if there's anybody out there that wants to work on it, contact oh, gosh, me. Please contact it. me right away, because I have huge plans um, that way go way, way beyond the scope of what sure, we're able we're, to and do. We're, ta we're talking to the, the, you know, the different competitive leagues out there and yeah. everything, and we can you know, work with you and uh, get something going. It would yeah, be awesome. So, 
contact me, please let me know. I, w I would love to see if there's anybody out there that's actually willing to work on it. Um, cause well, it, UTV it's huge. was it's always super a, important. Uh, yeah. community driven project. Right. Yep. Um, and I, I would love to see it, you know, yeah. get back up there. And that's, again. that's one of those things that we've always wanted to do a better job with. We've just never had the time or the opportunity or, you know, whatever reason. Yeah. Um, so I think now is a really good time where we could do that because we have everyone else, um, hopefully willing and able to help. Is that it? Um, Still waiting for one. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> who Do you know who asked yeah, the last question? Uh, actually, just to, to, to um, I guess, in, in conclusion to that, um, so well, I mean, one of the other things we've been working really hard on is making, you know, getting a basic game up and running that can act as a framework for people to make mods, whether it's something you know, a, more of a service type thing like UTV or new game types, I mean, jailbreak or, or whatever. Um, we're at the point now where we think we have a platform that people can build stuff on top of, that start building stuff on top of. Um, I think uh, Pete Nepley put a... Uh, yeah, he has a, the mod framework in there. Yeah, but he, he did a sample um, yeah. mod DLL, put some um, information on our wiki on, on how to build that. Um, certainly, if, you, if somebody wants to do stuff and they have questions, we'll be very responsive yeah, on the Pete, forums Pete with, loves doing the uh, yeah, but that's uh, so. like we really want to encourage you guys to start building stuff on top of UT, and um, and we will work on fixing the, the the limitations that make it hard for you to do what you need to yeah. do. Yeah, I mean the one thing that we don't have a lot of right now is content, but in terms of you know, like you said, the basic framework is there, and people yeah, can right. start really going to town and, and building well, stuff. Pete did a, a tutorial for low gravity, mm -hmm. and something else too. Actually, it was Instajib. Yep, Instajib. So, yeah. Can, yeah. What I would really like to see is um, one of the old UT mod groups. Either I, I think Wormbro is talking about possibly bringing Jailbreak back, but anybody, just start organizing a, a project and get it going, yeah. and then start working with us to help you get any support that you need sure, um, to support, try and push it forward. Yeah, we can get forums. We can get you know if you need features that aren't in the game, we need to know about it so we can get those features in. Mm -hmm. Um, so if there's anybody out there who wants to start, you know, organizing somebody, just PM Stacy or PM me. We're on the forums all the time reading stuff, and we'll help you get going with anything that you need to get it moving. But I, I think up until really recently, we really haven't been ready for that. But I think yeah. we're, we're beyond that. The game is stable enough now. We have people playing it outside the, the company. So I, I think it's a good time to, to yeah. start pushing that. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Yep. Yeah, one more thing. Uh -oh. Make sure. Make sure. <laughs> oh, this isn't one of the topics. So tomorrow uh, on the um, Unreal Engine stream, we're going to be talking about 4.4 uh, release. Yeah. And New features. UMG. And Dana will be there. And Nick Darnell, who is really awesome UT player, who kicks our asses all the time. <laughs> um, he'll be there too. So it's unrealengine.com slash twitch TV. No, the other way around. twitchtv.com slash Unreal Engine. And that's it. I'll see you guys right. next week. See you Bye. next week. Thank you.